Hi, Alex here from Rebellaper.com. In today's video, I am going to show you some top Swift UI tips you need to know how to create this list here in just a few lines of code. If you want to know exactly what I recommend in terms of creating dynamic lists, then keep on watching. Hit that subscribe button, open up Xcode, and let's dive in. So let's just jump right into the demo so we can show you what we are going to build out today. And uh, uh, as you can see, I have already prepared for you some uh, starter uh, files here that we are going to go through. It's nothing that much special, but uh, here we go. We have our Rebelloper works and this is what we are going to build out today. How awesome is and that? So let's just go into Milky Way Mania. Awesome. So these are my apps that I have built. Let's see, see it, buddy. Go ahead and take a look at them on the App Store. So that is that. Go ahead and take a look at the uh, resources folder so you can uh, create your starter project. And uh, here is my starter project. There we go. We have a content view with the hello world text. Pretty awesome, right? But we have added our constants file, service file, and list views. And of course, there's a list element model. So let's go through each one of them because I believe that uh, you, uh, most importantly, don't need to know the syntax. You need to know the thinking behind how you can create dynamic lists. So first of all, constants. You need to have icon names and image names. Of course, and that is a priority to not have typos in your uh, assets. You know, here we have, let me just drag and drop my assets here. Here we have our icon and image. So that is that, great. Uh, now that we have our constants and assets ready, let's take a look at our service. Basically, that is the data that you will somehow maybe fetch from a server or you already have it in your uh, app. But this is basically an array of list elements and the list element is, and I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, is basically a model for our uh, uh, list data elements. And it has an icon, this is an icon name, an image name, a title, and a text. So all of these are strings. So let's take a look at this model that we have created here. And uh, we have icon, image, title, text, all of them are strings. Now, here comes the most important part that uh, you might not uh, have seen in uh, UI kit. We have to uh, have this identifiable on the list element. And that is because Swift UI on the background handles all of your changes in the list with this identifiable. And of course you have to have an ID and uh, we add this uh, we just simply add an uh, equal sign here because we want to have this as a unique identifier, a UUID. So a uh, most important part from our list element model, it needs to be adhering to identifiable and you need to add an ID. Okay, that's that. Let's take a look at our list element view because that is how we are going to lay out. That is basically a row in our list. And pretty straightforward, we have an image here, a vertical stack with a title and a subheadline with the text, of course. And yeah, pretty straightforward here. And uh, we are uh, inserting our list element as an item here. As you can see, we, have, we are grabbing an icon and title and the text from that item. Now, what do we uh, want to show you uh, further? And that is the last uh, view. And that is the list detail view. This is when um, we are going to uh, show or present this new view. And we have our scroll view here with the item icon, item title, and item image, and some text, of course. Okay, that is self-explanatory. Uh, you already should know this. And now let's take a look at our content view. And uh, you'll be amazed that in just a few lines of code, we are ready, so hang in there. 
So first let's delete all of this and let's create a navigation view because we are going to uh, navigate of course in this app. Next up let's create our list here and what we are going to do is add in here some data and that is pretty straightforward. We are going to use our service dot and uh, here we go list data. Now inside our list we want to create a navigation link. So navigation link but before we do that let me just uh, add in here our item in because uh, of course uh, each item will be represented from our service list data with this item. So let's add in our navigation link here and uh, this needs to have a destination destination, auto completion, there we go. And uh, let me just remove this label, we don't need that. But in the, the destination will be the list detail view. So list detail view, there we go. And the list detail view of course needs an item. And how convenient, this is a list element and that is the item, there we go, item that we are getting from our list data. Again, the list data is an array of a list elements. Okay, there we go. Here we have our navigation link. And now we need to feed this navigation link, uh, the, basically if you are coming from UIKit, the cell. So the row view that we are going to use and that is the list element view. So a list, element view and this also requires an item that is of type list element and item. How, how awesome is that? And finally we want to add a navigation bar title and we are going to uh, use rebeloper apps or something like that or maybe best apps from rebeloper. And believe it or not, we are ready with our dynamic list. So let's build and run and see how this looks like. Here we go. So here we have best apps from Rebeloper. Maybe we need to uh, make this best apps. And uh, yeah, so we can see all of, all, all of the title of our navigation bar. There we go. Best apps, if I tap on it, all of this is taken to our list detail view. That's what it's called. And if we go back to best apps, capture, there we go. We have our dynamic list right and running. Now, if you like this simple list uh, setup with all of the setup that I have already explained you, go ahead and comment down below with hashtag Rebeloper so I may know that you really liked this video. Okay, that is it for our dynamic list. Now, if you are someone who is still stuck at mastering your application state, then I want you to hit that notification bell because in my next video, I am going to show you how to use state and binding in SwiftUI. So if you are interested, make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video. In the meantime, while you wait for that video to come out, make sure you also check out these two videos where I talk about iOS development, SwiftUI and how to code smarter. So make sure to check out these two videos as well. And as always, I will see you in the next one.